for me it was like a miracle um, it really was as if you know an angel had got me by the scruff of the neck and said all right that's enough of that we'll plonk you down here and see how you get on when i first moved in i, I came here with big big stars in my eyes i thought you know this is paradise maybe the water has a calming factor in all this i don't know i don't want to get too silly about it There's lots of other people and you know that when you feel like you live uh, in a sort of a village, really. You're obliged to take care of yourself as an individual, as part of a whole, as part of a whole building of people. There's lots of clashing of opinions. There's a lot of people who are very different who live here. Um, and that's a challenge to all get on quite well. I, th I think we manage that. This co-op has educated me um, about degrees of diversity, um, which is quite nice and healthy because I find myself relating to people which I probably didn't get exposure to for, even though I lived in London. We're all quite different, and maybe even if we all are quite like minded, it's this thing of we're neighbours after all. children from all different backgrounds learning to play and give and take and um, I just don't think it would happen any otherwise. Housing co-ops are rather utopian and unrealistic. People just know everything about you just because that's the way that co-ops operate. You know, you come in from work really tired, you don't want to actually go out to a meeting, but you have to because if, if nobody went, then, well, we wouldn't have a co-op.
always remember where I came from and the state the flats I used to live in was in. And so I never get blase to it. It impressed me every morning. I walk out on that balcony every morning and it takes my breath away. This is special because the river is there. That's the star of the show. That's the star of the show. Without you knowing it. Everyone should be able to live in fantastic housing. You know, there's really no reason why they shouldn't if nobody wanted to make a profit out of property. It would be impossible to live somewhere like this and, you know, to buy somewhere like this for, for me. I don't, I don't particularly believe in ownership. If you push me, I will admit that I resent the fact that I'll never be able to have the right to buy my home now, if I can call it my home. The right to buy gave the right to an illusion that you actually own, but most people are tied to crippling mortgages, right? If you have a mortgage and you don't pay it, you lose your, you lose your house. If you don't pay your rent here, you, you lose your house. Get in debt for the rest of your life. So I can go, when I'm 90, oh, I own this place, who cares? We live, we live in a society which measures everything by money and ownership. That's the whole centre of it. Um, you can't take property with you, so you can't take money with you. We all go in the end, so you, you don't own anything. Of, of the whole world, really. I think it'll get bigger and bigger and bigger. I, I hope so. Viva la cop! <laughs> That's the end. That's about how long it is.